Hi, my name is Lacey. Let me just take off my mask. I know I'm late. Well, what, maybe 45 seconds? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm so scattered. There's so much going on. <laughs> um, I, I just want to thank you for, uh, for even considering me for this opportunity to talk to you about why I do what I do. Um, I'm just, I'm a little bit nervous, so I'm sorry if I, if I start to ramble, just wrangle me back in. <laughs> I've had a lot of caffeine, um, so if I come off a little crazy, that's probably why. <laughs> um, so, my name is Lacey Dowsett, and I am a public defender in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We're the only public defenders, actually, in Louisiana to provide representation at first appearances when bail is set. Um, but, yeah, actually, I'm not originally from here. Um, I, I grew up on a farm. <laughs> A very very rural you know uh, straight out country town no sidewalks no stoplights um you know people always ask me why I do this um <laughs> sure isn't for the money but uh, my father actually he was a correctional officer and um as a kid I got to meet the people incarcerated in the facility where he worked and this this one day he introduced me to this older gentleman um I mean they they all call him heart attack. So, um, but I, I vividly, vividly remember him making me this helicopter out of a styrofoam plate and a pen, um, and just that right there. I was, I was a little kid, but I knew, um, you know, society just locks you away, puts you in a cage, and um, there is so much more to the story, but um. I went to law school at LSU, um, and the last clinic in law school is the, it's the criminal justice clinic, and I went to the public defender's office, and uh, I was a student attorney, and I mean, I was practicing as a public defender even before I was a lawyer. I mean, I knew I was hooked. Um, when I get overwhelmed, actually, which is, which is easy to get in this job, you know, I always look back at my, my first client that I was involved with helping, um, and he was a young kid. I say kid, he was, uh, he was about 19, um, charged with three counts of armed robbery. And this was the first time he had ever even been arrested. But um, armed robbery in Louisiana, and I hate this. The sentencing range is anywhere from 25 to 99 years. It's, it's a ridiculous, open-ended type of sentence, and it's a crime of violence where there is no opportunity for parole. And so the DA dug his heels in, and um, we, we worked hard for mitigation. Um, and the judge gave him 30 years. I, I built a relationship with him, and it was the first case I had truly done. And the hardest thing I had to do was to stand next to him um, and watch him hear uh, that sentence, 30 years in jail. Because I knew. I knew there, there goes his life. And so, um, from that moment on, I knew I, I wanted to advocate for these people, and, well, I wanted to win. <laughs> um, so, in 2016, we started this pilot program to get representation at the first opportunity after arrest. Because, um, see, what we were finding was clients were being charged with a misdemeanor, like, I don't say marijuana. Um, gosh, it's the bane of my existence. Um, but they were sitting in jail for months and months and months, sometimes six months. But most of these misdemeanors, the maximum sentence is six months. So sometimes they're just sitting there doing double the amount of time for the simple little charge. And because of it's all because of how long it took for the DA's office to get them an appointment. Some of them begged to plead guilty just to get out of jail. And now they have a conviction on their record, a conviction that they don't realize can be enhanced to a felony. So then... There's this vicious cycle. If you have a felony, you're more likely to lose benefits, lose rights. And we, we kept seeing this. So, um, you know, we, we pushed to get us to be with clients right after our arrest. I mean, look, Louisiana has the most incarcerated people anywhere in the country, which means the most incarcerated people anywhere in the world. And they are mostly for misdemeanors. But our pretrial release program started in... 2018. You know, I have cases where these kids are in college now. <laughs> I mean, those are the cases. Those are the cases that keep me going. 
but um, now with this COVID-19, we really, we really stepped up our game. I mean, the first week is that uh, the virus hit, but before the first positive case in the prison, you know, it was, it was chaotic. It was just pure chaos. And then after the first week, it was eerily quiet. <laughs> Why? Well, law enforcement had come to an agreement. They decided to give misdemeanors only a summons. They were only picking up more serious offenses, maybe 20 a day instead of 50. So how many people are we over arresting? There are so many people who should never have been here in the first place. We could have been doing this all along. But so we were dreading the first day that the, um, the day that the first positive would, would come into the prison and we were all taking the proper precautions. Everyone was, but, um, you know, we, we knew it was inevitable and, you know, it started with one individual and sure enough, you know, there's a line of 90 people and I can't get to them. They are not getting the care that they need. Our hands are so tied and I can't make any moves on their charges and the courts are closed and I know that they're, they're all worrying that they are going to die inside. You know, it's so overwhelming. What do I do? But um, we decided we had to focus on those we can help. Focus on lower level cases, lower bond, who we knew we could get out immediately. And um, that is how we were able to get so many people out so fast. I mean, we got 800 people released in one month. People, <laughs> oh my goodness, people were coming out. So elated. I mean, one wife was just standing there waiting for her husband. She is just so excited. She's jumping for joy. And she's just, I made you a cake. I made a cake. <laughs> you know, um, you know, they knew that they'd escaped. They could not get out of there fast enough. And I am, I am happy to report that those individuals did not come back. They did not return. You know, our recidivism rate is low. And I, I am so happy to see that. And, and, um, you know, that will help with our reform push. You know, in all this craziness, I can sleep at night knowing I, I may have helped save some lives. And I, I, I do hate to say this because of how horrible this has been, but if I can just look to the bright side. COVID has shined a light on criminal justice reform, the need for criminal justice reform. You know, Everyone almost, almost always goes to, well, oh, well, they murdered somebody. You know, they, they probably hurt somebody. They hurt a child. People don't realize that a lot of our, our prison population in Louisiana comes from simple drug possession. You know, these people are addicts. They are sick. Or, you know, you know the cycle. You have a busted taillight. Get arrested for that. You sit in jail, lose the job, lose the home, and the spiral starts. That could happen to anybody. It could happen to you. It could happen to you. Any of us could wake up and find ourselves in their shoes. You know, not everybody gets the same opportunities in life. You know, I am not burn the bridges, radical kind of girl. I mean, I am your, I'm your typical Southern girl. I love uh, my hunting. I love my guns, but I am a realist. And um, all I want to say is just, just be realistic with the society we live in today. Be part of the change. Be kind. <laughs>